All righty. So let's, uh, let's get this going. We're good to hey, go. Everyone. Uh, well, how's it going, everybody? Um, we'll do a quick intro and then we'll get into it. Very excited about this one. I am Patrick Spachowski. I do socials at clay.com as well as run a clay agency. And I am joined here today by a couple of legends. Eric Nowoslowski, founder of Growth Engine X, one of the best clay users out there. Very excited for the campaign he's about to show you as well as Felipe from Instantly AI, which is just an incredible tool. And I'm sure most of you on this webinar are aware of that already. So um, this webinar is just about how you can use Clay and Instantly to write incredible personalized outbound messages, much more powerful than most of the tools out there. And Clay and Instantly in general are just, they're like peas and carrots. They work yeah, incredibly well together. Great combo. And um, it's just Clay is great for writing personalized outbound found with great data and instantly is amazing for sending out personalized messages very seamlessly with clay and they have a native integration together and we'll get into that in a second but i figured we would kick it off by just showing you what clay can do and how it sequences in with instantly for great results so i'm going to pass it off to eric he's going to walk you through an incredible campaign that's had great results um using the two tools and uh from there we will get into the actual integration so i'll pass it off to you eric yeah, thank you so much. And so uh, thanks for having us on. It's been great to always work with Clay and Instantly. One thing that I think we've never been super public about because I'm never really public about the customers that we work with, but we've gotten permission from them to already be pretty public is we have actually been the outbound uh, agency provider for Instantly for I think over a year and a half now. Um, we've been doing it for a, a very long time. And when they first brought me in, I actually thought I was gonna be a part of a YouTube video. I thought they were gonna say something like, we tried 10 agencies and here's who the best was. Cause I was like, why, like, what are you guys talking about? Like, why, why would you do this? And they're like, no, 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 we really want you to, to be running our app out. I was like, great. So um, we kicked off our normal experimentation process that we had, you know, a year and a half ago. And it's since it's improved since then. And we've actually tried a ton of different campaigns for them. And for them, they're a perfect example of sometimes when something isn't broke, just don't fix it. It's uh, we found one campaign that was getting more results than any of the other campaigns. And so when everything is humming along and it's all good, we usually get 10 to 20 positive responses. Uh, we had a crazy inbox situation last week, so we're in a little bit of a lull right now. But um, I'm going to first present all of the things that we tried and then how easily clay makes it to try all of those different things and then we're going to get into the clay table that we're sending right now that works the best for them and uh then i guess we can pass it over to felipe and we can see everything so the first thing i want to show is if you've seen this document i'm going to share my screen and stop me if you can't see my screen in a couple of seconds if you've seen this document that I've created back over Christmas, I wanted to create my own version of Spotify wrapped, except it was for our customers. So I put together a 53 page document going over different campaigns we ran, the success of them and, and what, you know, kind of occurred from all of these. And in the document, I have a section called a case for using GPT to write your emails. And so it, even though we don't mention instantly here, this, precisely was our case study of working with instantly.ai. And so what we did was we, at first we tried all kinds of things and here's the literal results for all kinds of these things. Campaign to target new, highly, newly hired people uh, in their ICP. We got some good opportunities from it, but it actually wasn't the best performing campaign. Campaigns to target people using a competitor platform. We tried this once or twice, but ultimately it was not amazing stuff to be, to be doing. Uh, campaign messaging founders about founder-led sales automation, not amazing. Case study matching, okay, but still not ama amazing. We tried a campaign that was just two sentences and straight to the point. Actually, Raul like, loves those campaigns, so we were launching that for him. Then we mentioned uh, integrations of technographics that you could use. So if you're using HubSpot or Close or something like that, it instantly integrates really well. We got some good opportunities there. And then basically the best ones were the campaign to join a free community and the AI generated campaign. Now, who cares about the campaign to join a free community because it's free, it doesn't really matter. But the AI generated campaign on a lead to positive response ratio was by far the best uh, campaign that we ran. And that's currently the mainstay campaign that we run outside of their more enterprise campaigns. And so here, this clay table is precisely how we launch that campaign. And so what we do is we just, honestly, this is just Apollo data that we're just uploading um, or we'll just use the instantly data as well because instantly, a lot of people don't know this. And like, I've talked to Felipe about this. 
What I love about the instantly data that they have on the platform is they have it synced with some of the data that they have on the sending. So if somebody bounces, if an email bounces every time that you send to it, they're already taking care of that stuff for you. And um, there, there's just some things that I wish Apollo would do that instantly is taking advantage of on like the global thing. So like, and Felipe could maybe talk about this a little bit more, but if somebody has bounced every time you send an email to them, they're removing them. And I'm pretty sure if somebody, every time like people send them emails, they report them as like a spammer or they respond with an FTC complaint or something like that. They might be taking them out too, but that part I'm not so sure about, but definitely the bounce. And so we'll just upload data straight from the instantly data platform or the Apollo data platform. And it all just syncs into this clay table. And then everything is, this is all just data that we just get from uh, the CSV. Then we use debounce to verify all of the emails and to just make sure that everything is working. Um, then we move on and we enrich the company page so that we could create a, we could get a description of what the company does. Then we use GPT, which you could tell how long ago, if you aren't sure about when we started working with Instantly, this, this is what our GPT prompt looks like. And this is the UI for the GPT in clay. This was like UI number two, like it goes back so far of um, using this. And so what we're literally doing is we're just training an AI inside of this uh, prompt here of considering you see a certain description what are the outbound ideas that you would give given this description? So we included we included companies that were similar to Instantly so that if it ever saw something that was kind of similar, it would know what to say. We included companies that were completely off of their um, ICP just in case a company didn't quite fit, we would say, still say something useful to them. And then we also included companies that were actually perfect fits, like uh, like a software company like Kajabi, so that it was trained on responses of what precisely it should say in every case. And then Gymshark again, which is kind of mm, a little bit more like off target. So then we trained it on precisely if this is the company description, this is what I want you to say. And then we got the creative ideas over here. And then I don't go, have to go too much into how it syncs with Instantly because we're going to show the, the Instantly integration in a little bit. But um, then it just all completely syncs with the Instantly integration inside of Instantly, sends off the leads, and we're good to go. This is probably one of the most underestimated loves that I have for Clay that people... People think of Clay as a data product, but Clay is not a data product. It's really a workflow um, tool. And so the best part about this is before we were doing this, think about what you would have to do if you were doing this without Clay. So first you would have to pull your list from a data provider. Then you would have to take that CSV file and you would have to upload it to a email validation platform and wait for the email validation platform to be done and then once the email validation platform was done, which could take for as many emails as we're sending, it could take an hour for the email validation platform to be done. Then once it's done, you have to then download that CSV. Then you would have to find some platform that's going to give you the company descriptions, or you're going to have to connect an API yourself in Google Sheets. I, yeah, that, I don't even know what else you'd want to do to find a company description here. Then you might have to use something like GPT for sheets or something like that to then get all of these, uh, the copywriting done here for all of the outbound ideas that we're sending. And then once all that's said and everything is done running, you have to then download the Google sheet and then upload it to your instantly campaign. And again, here, we're even doing another thing where we're even checking Prospio to see if we can find an email address that um, Apollo or instantly couldn't find. And again, that's just another step in the process. The most amazing part to me about Clay is I can take any list and as long as it comes with an email address, a website and a LinkedIn URL and a company name, we can just launch the campaign. There, there, there's nothing else that we need. The, all of these things get filled out, but it's not all of the stuff that we even need. Oh, I need a first name too. Sorry. And so um, the best part about this is then we just upload more leads to this campaign and then we can just click out of it and we just move on. We don't even have to think about the, the campaign anymore because as soon as we find a valid email, then it's going to enrich for the company description. And once it enriches for the company description, it's going to enrich for the AI generated text. And then once the AI generated text is done, 
and then we're going to send it to the instant link campaign. So this makes it really, really scalable to run really sophisticated campaigns where otherwise you'd have to be moving spreadsheets back and forth and doing all these CSV file things and it, it would just get crazy. Um, so yeah, this is one of those campaigns that once we found this campaign, we don't really touch this campaign. We just keep it running and it, uh, always produces results for us. We've reused their TAM list. We've probably had to reuse it twice in a year and a half now, and it still produces the same results because people just forget. And it's just a great message um, for us to reach out to them with. So yeah, that's a, a quick overview of the most successful campaign that we've run for, uh, instantly.ai. Beautiful. Love Thank you. Love Appreciate it. Um, yeah, I mean, as Eric mentioned before, uh, Clay is an incredible workflow tool. And I, I'd say one of the less, like, you know, it, it's the more common uses of Clay that people know about as well are just, it, it's has, it can find incredible data. Like, because it's just aggregating all of the data providers that you use already into one tool and then outputting it as just like a clean column in a spreadsheet. And, and from there, you can write personalizations that are significantly more powerful than that of let's say if you use one or two of the data providers and again as he mentioned like the time savings you get just from having all of those into one sheet is unbelievable um yeah so yeah uh felipe if you wanted to show some of the, the results on your end like on the instantly platform yeah feel free to and then after that maybe we can go into the actual integration itself and how to set it up for your personalizations when you're using clay yeah and no, i love it and thank you once again Eric, for sharing you know some of the magic sauce that uh and the secret sauce that we have i mean uh, yeah, we have been super happy with the results so far. I mean, you have done amazing and also, you know, using Clay to get some of the results. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm going to share a bit of the, the um, actual results. I think numbers, um, you know, can speak by themselves. Um, but also how we use some AI to automate the entire workflow because the AI component is not just when you're gathering the data and kind of like uh, targeting the right people with Clay, but you can also use it later on in the process when you actually have to like close people or close sales. Uh, so actually, let me share my screen here. Let me know if you can see it here. Yeah, I think you should be seeing this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah we're good. Awesome. So this is just a summary of how many emails we have been sending with instantly uh, via Eric's campaigns. So over the past 12 months, we have sent almost half a million emails. Um, it could be more, of course. Um, but and, and obviously, we're ramping up this over the last weeks, as you can see. Um, we are obviously very busy all the time. Um, but yeah, basically, um, we have had 2,000 opportunities or almost I mean, like $700,000 in opportunities in uh, new sales only via call email. And honestly, we like to practice what we preach because um, we have a phrase here instantly that we we love, which is like we grow instantly using instantly because often people ask us like, how do you grow so fast, guys? And obviously we have different channels, but definitely call email is one of those channels. Um, so yeah, this is just a summary of the great work that you know Eric has done with us um, and, and using instantly to grow instantly. Now, we I also wanted to show you um, a campaign or actually uh, an account from uh, one of our partners where they are also using um, Clay, and this is some. Of, these are some of the results that you can also use by combining both Clay and Instantly. So, for example, these guys they are killing it. They're getting a thirteen percent, fifteen percent reply rate, which is like crazy uh, when you compare it with the average. Uh, I don't know, like, what do you guys think is the average in the market right now? Because you know, when I already see someone getting like fifteen percent reply rate, uh, I don't know. We a campaign with two thousand people and then getting eighty opportunities or sales or people saying yes, let's do it. It's for me, it's just crazy. Um, and you know, the way they were explaining this to me, and I mean, the whole, um, process that they were using is pretty much using Clayent, which is a program. I mean, Patrick, you can obviously like dig deeper on that, but the way they will, um, classify the data before it goes into a campaign. It's awesome. Actually, these guys, they were using our lead finder solution. So they were getting the data from our lead finder. We have like 200 million emails there. And then they were, they will, they will push that con those, uh, contacts into clay and reach the data like use some clay gent um, magic. And then <laughs> the outcomes is just these amazing results. Um, and then I guess uh, when you are getting, let's say like when you have those crazy numbers that we have here at Instantly, like for example, like let's say you are getting um, 2000 replies, right? Or, or you're sending like half a million emails. Like how do you manage so many replies? Like that's, that's a problem that we sometimes, um, you know, encounter or, or people will ask us like, 
you know, like, do I need to hire more people? And the answer is like, not really. Like you could do the same, but with less people via yeah, instantly. So a lot of people will build like there's sort of like um, automations in order to, um, you know, reply back to people like when they say, yes, send me more information. So this is the uh, instantly Unibox. And basically you, do not, you don't need to build an automation if you use instantly. Um, you know, I know like there are some other uh, ways of getting this done, but we just built this all in-house for you guys. Uh, so it's a combination of OpenAI or ChatGPT with um, just a bit of our secret sauce. And basically, we call it the AI Inbox Manager. So it will just handle all of the replies for you on autopilot. So whenever someone replies like, please send me the video or send me more information or whatever it is, the AI model will just learn based on your previous replies and it will just reply back. It will, uh, yeah, it will just keep the conversation going. Um, and if it's not confident enough, it's not going to reply. So uh, that's another beautiful thing of the of the model that we built um basically uh it's only going to reply when it's just confident it's not going to ruin that uh, conversation or lead um and yeah I, I think that's that's sort of like a summary of how you can get amazing results but at the same time like not have any bottlenecks along the way um yeah i just didn't want to like take too much time because I, I think eric is the one that is sharing the most valuable stuff here so no. <laughs> yeah yeah um sweet well i figured um now we can kind of just walk into oh i think uh patrick's Whoa. uh internet <laughs> yeah. ah, that's a shock okay. <laughs> yeah <laughs> he pulled a magic trick but yeah anyways so yeah no, I, again like eric um you know we have been super happy with the results that you have given us so far um i think like one one question that we are seeing often from the community is um you know like we so we have like one of the largest communities in cold email out there like it's called uh i think we have like forty thousand members um i'm not flexing at all just just you know you, it's you just true. This. Yeah, numbers speak to themselves yeah yeah but basically um you know this was something that was very exciting for our community and we are actually live streaming there as well um and a lot of people will be asking like how do you use clay um you know to your your campaigns now i know you went like like through an overview of uh how to use clay on a basic level i mean on, on an advanced level like basically for instantly right but if, if someone was like a very basic user um and they just they will need to start getting uh using clay like what would be the best way to like learn this stuff or like to um get to use clay i think this will benefit a lot of our community because yeah, we have a lot of these questions yeah i i definitely agree with that so a lot, of, like I said, a lot of people get hung up and they think, oh, clay is super expensive, you know, and, and they get hung up by that. And it's like, clay is the cheapest employee you're ever going to hire ever. And so for the biggest thing that I was just talking about there with like, what what's your alternative to not using clay is you would have to hire a person. So let's say a virtual assistant starts at like $800 a month. You'd have to hire a person to literally move spreadsheets and do all these kinds of things, right? So when, like I said, when I talk about clay and using it in an outbound agency, sometimes all the crazy stuff that we do isn't even the most valuable thing that happens. Really, the most valuable thing that we do is just the workflow part of clay. And so now they've changed the pricing a little bit. And I'm going to go on a quick field trip on my computer and I'm going to make sure I'm not saying anything totally off base. But you can use your own API keys and bring it into clay and never yeah. use any clay credits. So... API, use your own API keys. Okay, so for $149 a month, you can use your own API keys. Now that allows you to use your email verification service that allows you to use your uh, sending platforms. Oh, I'm so sorry. Let's just check on that though. Uh, all right, so for $349 a month, you can use the email tool integrations, whatever. So compare that to hiring a virtual assistant. Now for $350 a month, you could totally replace a person who pulls your list. Well, somebody still has to pull the list. But everything after pulling the list, cleaning the emails, making sure the first names are fine, making sure the company names are fine, making sure that the employee headcount is correct, segmenting the leads so that if they have above 50 employees, they're going to go to one campaign. And if they go to have less than 50 employees, they're going to go to a different campaign. All for $350 a month without spending one single clay credit, you can get all of those things done. And so it's like, it's completely replacing a virtual assistant at that level. So when people talk to me about first getting started in clay, I tell everybody first think of it as a workflow tool and don't yeah. go crazy with like, Oh my gosh, the clay credits are so expensive. And like, blah, blah, blah. it's like, okay, clay is the only data product in your stack that actually has a hard cost for all of their data. I just want to remind people about that. 
Apollo, every time they sell you a um every time they sell you a contact credit or anytime they sell you an export credit, what a ridiculous idea. They're making a hundred percent margin on that. There's there's no cost for them to fulfill that for you. On Clay, these are all different data providers. And every time you ping Clay and you ask for a credit from Clay, Clay is going to a data provider in the back end. And you can see it, like if you ping built with, like they're using built with API and built with is charging them a price. Like that's just happening. Now there are some clay credits that you shouldn't be paying for. So like email validation, don't pay for those clay credits. Most of the time, don't use the open AI um, function inside of clay without your API key. Like don't use the credits for it unless you have a gigantic prompt. And so when you're first getting started, like just think of it as a workflow tool of easily being able to clean company names for free, cleaning first names for free, validating emails in line so that it all just moves forward. And then syncing um, people into campaigns completely automatically. That I would say is the the like where everybody should just get started. It's like these little manual tasks that you'd have to do. Like if you have three different campaigns and you have three different campaigns and one is for a head of marketing, another one is for a director of marketing, and another one is for an SDR. You either pull three separate lists and run three different workflows for that, or you pull all of your lists, you set up a free formula in clay, and then it just picks which one you go to. So like I said, when you first get started, just think of it as like a tool that just can bring in data providers that you're already using. Don't go crazy about like, well, Eric posted about this and like, you know, Eric must be having a cost per row of like 10 cents over that. Like that could like, that's so expensive. And it's like, yeah, I get it. But that's not, there are still so many campaigns that we launch where the offer is just good enough that we're not doing anything other than maybe a little bit of AI personalization, but really we're just using it as a workflow tool from there. Yeah. If you, if you think about it, it's just crazy that, I mean, what's the pricing for clay? Like it, it goes for, um, it starts I mean, at 149 or 129, oh, 149. And then yeah, moves up to like, I guess okay. it, it could from on the site, it's $149 a month to 2000. And then you can go to an enterprise package. Yeah. Like we have an enterprise package with clay. So, so, yeah. so, okay. So 149 plus the $97 of instantly, um, which by the way, we are aware we're not the cheapest, but we really try strive to be like the Apple in the market out there, yeah. like have like a good quality, very simple to use. And, you know, like, and then we have like the AI inbox thingy that replies on autopilot rather than having to like use chat GPT and build like a full integration, train the model yourself. Like we've done all of that for you. Um, and you know, like for less than, I don't know, like for less than $500, you could probably have like an, an entire team, you know, rather than having to like, like having to hire two or three people like, or an assistant, someone to get the data for you to reply the, to reply on your behalf. Like it's just crazy. And, and you can scale that and go even further. So. I don't know, like, it, it, it's just like, this is something that I was very excited, honestly, to do, like, a webinar with you guys, um, because I feel like um, we are just complementing each other just to make people's lives easier. So um, I think maybe we can answer some questions from the community, because uh, I'm already seeing a few questions here. So sure, yeah. how, how about we go... Like, so here, Fiona, Fiona Cameron is asking, can you share the prompt you use to generate the outbound ideas with GPT? I think she is referring to the one. Yeah. Um, yeah. The... Let me just pull it. How would I even, should I read it or do I drop it in the chat? <laughs> I guess How you can I drop it in the chat. I guess you can drop it in the chat later, but maybe like, if, if you want to go through the process of building like a good, a good, yeah, um, and, and it's probably more valuable. So I think yeah. I just put it in the chat and we'll see, but the, um, the, uh, here's the thing with creating prompts. I, I think it's a four step process that I do every time. And, and people are like, I can't make my prompts work for me. And I'm like, ah, I'll explain that in a second. So a, um, the a process that we have for creating prompts is I first always think to myself, okay, step one, Overall, what do I want this prompt to do? So I want this prompt to create three bullet points. So I say, hey, all right, you're going to be given an input, create three bullet points of marketing ideas that are possible with cold email um, in the output. And then the second step that we do is we feed it the information that we need it to, to do. I still see people making this mistake. They'll, they'll say, you know, write an email to this company and make it personalized. And it's like, 
the the input is literally just instantly.ai and it's like okay i mean maybe gpt knows about instantly.ai but like that's not you can't just do that so you got to give it the information that you want it to reference i always i always say like always have gpt reference things don't let gpt just do its own research just say hey this is the input you're going to be using and you're going to take it from there so step one, generally give it a direction of what it needs to be doing. Step two, give it the data that it needs to be referencing. Don't let it do its own research and its own thinking. Another thing to think about too is um, always have it do one thing at a time. I'll I'll talk about creating a prompt that I've wanted to create that I made a mistake on. And I'll talk about that after as a troubleshooting guide. But so then step three is now you have to take all of the variants that the GPT might have and then funnel it into one thing right so i always say that ai is kind of like you're talking to the smartest human in the world and so if you told the smartest human in the world oh you're talking to the smartest human in the world who has absolutely no context about what you're doing so if you tell the smartest human in the world hey we're selling tacos now there's so many questions that come from selling tacos like what kind of tacos oh, do we only sell tacos on taco tuesday can we even say that because taco bell trademarked that are we selling toy tacos like there's just so many like questions that come from it so you want to use step three to really refine, this is exactly what I want the prompt to look like. So then we go further and we say, hey, we want it to be three bullet points. We want it to be about like marketing ideas that only have to do with outbound cold email. We want it to be um, only business to business ideas. We want it to be um, like each bullet point can only be 15 words. Like that's where you wanna really shrink it down. This is also the section, and I think this is where most people go wrong with AI prompts, is they will, do the AI prompt and then they'll just look at it and they say, well, this didn't work. I'm done. But the AI prompts, the bad ones are the key to fixing your prompt. So whatever happened wrong in your example prompts, you want to go back and figure out, okay, why did that happen and how can I fix it? So one thing I was dealing with one day was like, it kept saying the company name, including like the LLC and like all those things. So then in my third step, that's where I fixed it. I said, if you see a company name, normalize it like a human would say it, don't say QVC, LLC, say, you know, QVC and take out any extra symbols and all that other stuff. So in step three, that's where we're doing most of our work of refining things. And then step four, I either give it a prefix um, or I tell it how I want it to look. So a prefix, I use prefixes a lot in my prompts so that I'm in control of the messaging. So, because if you just say, hey, write a personalized first line to this company, I have no clue what that line is really gonna sound like. But if I say, write a personalized first line to this company and use this prefix every time, hey, I was on LinkedIn and I saw your company helped people, blah, blah, blah. Then you know what this is gonna, like you know what the output is gonna look like so you can write the rest of your email with confidence and you kind of know what it's all gonna look like there. And then for doing more complicated things, we'll also say, here's some examples of some things that are good. They have nothing to do with the output that you should be creating. You should only learn from the formatting here. And so one prompt that I made a mistake on last week that I was trying to create is I was, I thought of this PS line that I wanted to create a PS line based on positive news that happened at a company um, that somebody used to work at. And that positive news happened while they were working at the company. And if we can't find something for the company, then we would do positive news that happened at the college that they went to while they were at the college. So we would analyze and be like, okay, you worked at Salesforce from 2010 to 2022. One positive thing that happened then is they acquired Slack. So then the PS line would then become, hey, you know, I noticed in your background, you know, you worked for Salesforce. Did you have anything to do with the Slack acquisition? That's like the end line that we wanted to create. But the mistake I kept making is I kept asking it to do the research and output the line all in one prompt. And that was getting crazy. It was it was just absolutely nuts. So I changed it and I made one prompt for just get historical ideas for the companies, just get historical ideas for the colleges, and then pick the most specific interesting ones and turn that into a sentence. So then we would have inputs of their past company experience and that would feed one prompt, inputs of their college experience and that would feed another prompt. And then I would have examples of what good lines looked like and what I thought was really specific. And then we fed that into another prompt. And then we could get like, you know, the, the like uh, Eric, I saw you used to work, you know, at the Gateway Chamber of Commerce. How cool was it when, you know, like were you, did you have anything to do with the blah, blah, blah. Oh, and another prompt we did was we took their title into account too. So if they were the CEO or C-suite at that company, of course they had to do something with that. So we would say, what was it like when this thing happened? And then if they didn't have a C-suite title, we would ask like, were you a part of crazy news story? Um, 
So anyway, I hope that's some guidance into AI prompting. Did I did I even answer that question? You think? Oh yeah, hundred percent. Okay, yeah. we're, definitely we're answer that above, question. Above and beyond, definitely, like always. Yeah. 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 By the way, seeing seeing some love here in the comments. Um, just signed up for instantly and recently heard of Clay, so this is perfect timing for me. Awesome. awesome. This is the kind of yeah kind of stuff I love to see. Um, I don't know, Patrick, if uh, you want to go over like um, the integration between uh, instantly and Clay. I mean, Eric already covered that, so I don't know if that's necessary. But um, yeah, maybe we can just yeah, keep going yeah. over questions. It's like it's relatively basic. Um, Eric, uh, maybe afterwards, can just pull up the campaign he just showed and just show how it works. But I mean, essentially, what you're doing is you're creating personalizations within Clay that you're then inputting into a variable and instantly. So the way that we all are writing copy is we're writing a template. And in that template are a series of variables that are changing depending on the person or company that we're reaching out to. So in Eric's example, all of those suggestions that he has, it's a variable. And we're uploading that variable via the integration with Clay and instantly to instantly. And instantly is incredible for AI personalization. So it allows you to upload those variables to instantly very easily and then send them out and sequence them via instantly. So Eric, would, uh, my service is so shoddy, I'm like afraid to do it, but could you share your screen and show how the uh, integration works? Yeah, and this is this is something that, um, James, you're killing it with that reply rate. That's pretty crazy. This is something that I think is, to be honest, a little bit funny to me when people ask me, they're like, well, how do you integrate instantly with, your messaging like how does how does all of that work and I, I don't know i think people's brains break a little bit when uh when we're putting this together because a lot of people think of custom variables i guess as just like one word but custom variables can also be like a whole paragraph right and so all you need to do when you want to send messaging from your clay table to an instant lead campaign is literally just fill out everything that you need. You need an email, first name, last name, company name, all these things. They have one personalization, but uh, we should probably even get rid of that. I'm not even sure if that's live anymore. This is probably the old thing. Because then you have your custom variables in here, and we want to send all of this data to the uh, table, uh, well, to instantly. And so um, they actually made a request that they wanted the work phone, the LinkedIn URL, and the personal phone of the person. So that's why it's there we're not actually using that in the campaign they just made a request that they wanted it on their side but see how we have this this variable named creative ideas and then all we're doing is we're just inserting the creative ideas variable so literally whatever is in this column even though it's like three bullet points and it's like 50 words or whatever this is we're just inserting it as one variable and it all just goes in just like that and then probably my favorite part about using clay as a workflow is you could set up a conditional formula where the conditional formula here honestly isn't that that crazy. But see how what we're doing here is we're only running this if the master email column has data and creative ideas has data and uh, like a couple of other these things, which isn't even really pertinent anymore. What I was talking about before, right, of like when if you wanted to launch a campaign to people who had 50 employees and more or a different campaign to people who had 50 employees and less, like that that you would have to do manually you'd have to upload csvs and it'd be crazy but with the conditional formula editor in clay you could just do it all right here and you can have two integrations and no matter what's happening about the campaign like here here's one campaign we used to run this campaign we don't run this campaign anymore but see like look how crazy we could get and i'll tell you that like we weren't even spending that many clay credits right and so we were launching four different campaigns depending on what industry the prospects were in. So if they were in the management consulting industry, we launched that campaign. If they were in the staffing and recruiting industry, we launched this campaign. If we were in the financial industry, a services campaign uh, industry, they, we launched this campaign. And so see how like this costs no clay credits and we're automatically still getting value of just being able to just upload a huge list of companies and then just having it sift through everything. And then we use the built with integration, which either you can use your own API or you could use clay credits. So I will say now we're paying for stuff. Then we use the built with integration to launch a tech campaign. And then if we couldn't do anything, like the tech campaign didn't work and all of the other stuff didn't work like these, then we would send them uh, a AI generated campaign, which this is so old. This was like maybe one of the first AI generated campaigns I ever created, which this is kind of crazy, like thinking back on it, um, where we're literally saying, it looks like you sell to marketing strategists, or it looks like you sell to behavioral healthcare and special education professionals. It looks like you sell to advertisers and publishers. 
right? Like we're just analyzing through their ICP as well. Wow, this is crazy throwback. Like this is, this, this was like cutting edge for me when I like first made this, this is so funny. And so then we're just automatically running a fallback campaign where even if they didn't qualify for all of the other things over here, we're, we're launching them over here. And when it comes to clay credits, we're using one clay credit here for enriching the company. This is our own API. This is all of our own API. This is our own API. And then this is our own API. And so like, I didn't like, I'm robbing clay at this point. <laughs> like, There's not like, I'm not using clay for anything basically uh, to make <laughs> this campaign happen. Right. So um, yeah, the, that's how like the integration can work so seamlessly with instantly, but then you could also just be sending things in different directions and, and doing all those things for whatever $350 a month. Um, basically uh, like either half or a quarter or just a fraction of what you would have to like hire a person to do these things yeah. for. Yeah. I think, I think that's a good hack. And and I obviously like this kind of plays against us, but since we're like sharing, like how to reduce your cost, um, you can actually also have unlimited context on instantly. Um, so basically we developed like a few weeks or actually it was a, a few months ago, uh, something called lists and basically um, not only you can save on clay credits by using uh, external APIs, but also on instantly, you can just store as much data as you want. It's unlimited. And then later on, push it to a campaign. So we actually created that thinking. I mean, we had a lot of requests from people like, hey, do I have to delete my contacts um, if I want to contact more people? And then we were like brainstorming, like, how can we make it happen? So, you know, like, so it's, it's um, you know, the, it, it works financially for us, but also so people don't need to like have like a thousand spreadsheets flying all over the place. Um, so yeah, then we created like the list feature and basically you can just have unlimited contacts and then you push, you push them to a campaign and they, they become active contacts. Um, and then they count, I guess your credits and then you can just move them back to list, which they're just going to be idle. So, um, yeah, like it's, it is a feature that not, a, not a lot of people know. And, you know, sometimes people, they are like, um, you know, like, oh, it's, it's going to get expensive. I have like, I don't know, this database of like a million people. And then, I'm like, then we, we, we ask them, I mean, we ask people like, are you actually going to contact the million people in one go? And they're like, no, well, actually you could have them all um, and you don't have to pay like a fortune for it. So since we're like talking about small hacks, um, I guess yep. this was a good one. This, there is this question here in the community. Um, by the way, he means reply rate, not open rate. He correct himself, but basically he's asking what's a good reply a reply rate to aim for when having a clay project so and, yeah. and also then yeah go for it so this is something our customers ask us all the time and it just it just really depends and i'm going to tell you what it depends on so first of all when you're when we say like a clay project i think you're really talking about like the cost and then making the messaging and, and doing all of those things the um what i tell everybody is that your offer is more important than the crazy personalization you put in front of it. If somebody sends me an email and they say, Eric, oh my gosh, I've been following your content. It's been crazy. You, When I first started following you, you had 8,000 followers and now you've got 27,000 followers on LinkedIn. I've been along for the ride the entire time when you were at the Chamber of Commerce, blah, blah, blah. Like, if they send me like this crazy personalized message and then they're like, do you want to buy a bouncy house? I'd be like, hey man, like, great. Like, it was, a, it was a great message. Don't get me wrong, but like, I don't need a bouncy house. So like, no, I'm out. Like, I, I don't need that. And so- your offer has more to do with reply rates and all those things than like the clay campaign and the AI and, and all of those things. And so um, when you're measuring reply rates, it's it's just so diff difficult because it just depends on your offer. So this is the way that we look at it is on average last year across all of our customers, we had to send 329 emails to lead. Well, we had to send to 329 contacts in order to get one positive response. Now, this number is also corroborated with Nick Abraham. If you don't know who he is, he is a, a legend. Like, and when people like in the chat, people are calling me the goat. That's not true. Like Nick Abraham has triple the amount of clients. He's an operations specialist. He's, he's amazing at cold email. Awesome dude. And he, he even tweeted, he said, if we get 300 for, if we reach out to 375 people and we get a positive response, we scale that campaign. And I was like, all right, cool. So I'm not crazy. Like 320, 375. Great. Like this is, this is what we're working with. So then it all becomes a situation of what does your target addressable market look like, right? Because if you if you say you got a campaign where you were reaching out to 150 people and you got one positive response, which that's basically what we're doing for instantly right now. For basically every 150 people we reach out to, we get a positive response. They have 120,000 people in their TAM. 
What should we do? Should I think of a campaign that would beat this campaign or should I just send more emails? In that situation, you should definitely send more emails. Now, let's also take into consideration, what if you've tried 12 different ideas and you've got one campaign that's getting, for every 500 people you reach out to, you're getting a positive response and your TAM still has 120,000 people in it. Well, you've tried 12 other ideas. This is your best campaign. Well, you should keep experimenting, but you should just scale that campaign and just make it work, right? And just, just keep going. What you want to do is always look at your TAM as how many emails per day can I send so that I don't have to reuse this list every two months, minimum two months, and even two months is pushing it. Really, it's like every three months is way better when you have to reuse a list. Now, let's take it on the flip side where you're like, okay, there's 10,000 people in my market. And for every 750 people I reach out to, I get a positive response. No go. That's not a, that, that's not like, that's not going to work. That's not mathematically going to work because you're going to email all those people. And within a month you're going to be done and you're, you're going to have to reuse the list. And it's just, it's just not going to be great. So, um, when you're, you're talking about like, what's a good reply rate, it's so tough because it depends on your offer. We have some customers that like, we have one, one agency that we do software development um, work like they're a software development company an outsource software development company. And we do stuff for them. They're probably the only software development company I would work with because they understand expectations well. And every time I talk about this, people want me to run the campaign for them. And I just refuse because he just really understands the expectation. He gets like five positive responses and we send, we send maybe 10,000 emails a month for him. And he gets like five, but each oh, wow. one of those responses he closes two out of each of them and his contracts are fifty thousand dollars each so it's like great like th th that math works out so when people are talking about good reply rates this that and the other thing you have to take in consider into consideration how many leads do i have to reach out to in order to get a positive response how big is my tam after i've done my testing and can we scale this campaign so by the time i have to reuse this list it's three months later down the road and then three does the math just even make sense so for the amount that you're paying to like run these campaigns does the math make sense so alex hermosi says that you can spend like a third of what it whatever revenue you're going to receive gross profit like gross profit revenue whatever gross profit revenue you're going to receive from a customer you can spend a third of that to acquire the customer so if your gross profit is a thousand dollars you can spend 300 ish dollars to acquire them so then again it's just a math equation of like all right the data that you are sending and the time it takes you to close this customer and all those things put in, does that work? And so reply rates across everything, I can't answer that. But th these are the frameworks that we think of to say, okay, is this working or is this not working? Yeah, makes a lot of sense. A question from Matis. Um, Eddie, what um, Yeah, most favorite clay gen use cases? Live updated data. So what I mean by that is like... <laughs> If you really need to know some custom research about a company that is either live or it's not listed the same way every time, that's my favorite use case. So we just use it to help a company that, um, and I guess I could say, I'll say it. It was a company that uh, was in the Hermosi portfolio and we did a small consulting project for them. I'm not saying like we are endorsed by the Hermosi portfolio right now, but what they wanted to do is they wanted to build a list of investors and they wanted to understand who, what kind of companies do these investors invest in. Now, if you just look at the front page of a venture capital website, or you look at the LinkedIn description of a venture capital website, you're really not going to get a whole lot of information. The only other option that you could get is like maybe look at their past um, investments. But then if you do that, the, like it's going to be crazy to try to enrich that. You're really not going to get everything. It's just going to get crazy. So Clagent is a perfect example for this. And this is where a two-step Clagent process is best. Because again, you always, when you're do, using AI, you always want, always, always, always want to, um, you always want to give it one task at a time. So then what we did is we said, hey, go find the page where they list the types of companies that they invest in. And we gave a huge prompt. And we the only difference with Clagent prompting is that I gave before is like we're still doing the like, hey, this is generally what you should look at. Here's the inputs that you should look at. But instead of like just doing the thing where we refine what the output should look like, we also list out how we would do it manually as a human as well. And then that gets put into the Clagent prompt. So we said, I usually search on Google and I look for, you know, 
company name, investment thesis, or whatever it might be. It finds the page. Then we do two options and we see what works better. We scrape that page with Zenros and we get just the content from the page. And then we use 3.5 to summarize it. And then we use four to like make an output of who they actually invest in. Or you can use Clayton to look at that page and make the decision of what kind of companies they invest in. Just see which one works for you better on cost. In this example, I think finding the page and then scraping it with Zenros and then summarizing it with a cheaper AI model was the better way to do it. But so like this really custom research is probably my favorite kind of use cases for Clayton. A lot of classification things that people are doing, I like, but Clayton has a little bit of like an unpredictability to it. And so like, I see people all the time who are like, oh, I use Clayton to classify if this company is an e-commerce company or not. It's like, don't do that. Cause it could go like a little bit off the rails. If you just use serper.dev and you scrape and like you scrape for a Google shopping um, thing. So one, there's no e-commerce brand in, in the planet that's not using Google shopping. And then two, the only way Google shopping can exist is if there's an item to be transacted. So then it's like, if you, if there's just a Google shopping result, when you use server.dev to scrape the, the search, then it's an e-commerce brand. Or if you're looking for a company and you're like, oh, I really wanna know if this law firm handles wrongful termination, like just do a Google search on top of their site and see if they mention wrongful termination because yeah, it, it's either gonna be there or it's not. Like that, that's just the way it's gonna be. So when we're doing Clayton stuff, it's really like this more, custom research that's not going to be the same every time and we can't just do like a keyword scan or we can't just scrape things for that so again i hope i even answered that question sometimes yeah just yeah i also seen you using it for scraping uh the pricing pages and i find that super smart like yeah especially, yeah, yeah. especially yeah yeah no, especially when you start doing stuff like i don't know targeting companies that do enterprise only uh sales and then you know you can start like matching that with the offer um and it's just crazy how it pumps the the reply rates like for example this um so this campaign that i just show you that you know this person getting a 15 percent reply rate with a combo of instantly and clay um he does something very similar you know he runs clayent and just like you were saying like he will just match like a few variables he will also try to keep the the um, this factor of, of you know the the model being a bit unpredictable sometimes like very low and yeah, he, he didn't want me to disclose the full sauce. He asked me personally not to do it, but he gave me, uh, you know, approval to share some of the results, which is awesome. Um, so yeah, love that. So here is yeah, a another, question another from, add... go on. Yeah, sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah, another thing I add about Clay is just, honestly, it's good for any task that it's difficult to do repetitively or pro programmatically with regards to research. So I think the pricing page is a great example of that. Like to find a pricing page, like, and for every different website, it's going to be different finding the pricing page. It could be the same with the finding the blog or finding like contact information. You can't do that the same way over and over again. Clayton's a much smarter way to do it because it figures out that way um, as opposed yeah. to um, other like other generic scrapers that use a programmatic approach to scraping. So just in general, it's it's so powerful and it's great for finding any niche data too. like just data you cannot find from generic data providers. Like when was their last YouTube video like? Gonna be kind of hard to find that at scale, right? Or like, what, like, how, when was when's their next webinar coming up, or what's the name of their latest fashion collection? I don't know. Whatever, it doesn't matter. But really good for those. Yeah, we uh, we'll re-answer this one in a way. Uh, but if there is anything else you want to add, um, so there's so there's a uh, this whole debate between relevance versus personalization. And so I'm I'm here to say that relevance is of course the better thing. Don't like hate me for what I'm about to say. I completely understand. If you could be relevant, be relevant. If you could reach out to a restaurant and say, hey, I saw on Yelp, people were complaining about your parking not, lot not being paved. Do you need anybody to come in and pave it? Of course, that's the best message that you can say. I totally get yeah. it. Yeah. So then, so what I call relevance is like using AI to send an email, like a first line that has to do with your problem. Like we're, we're going to call that relevance. I looked into your open job positionings for an SDR role versus an AE role. And it looks like the commissions are di completely different for each role. How are you keeping track of all of your different commissions? Great. Like th th that's relevant. Personalization is, I, it's just more of like an attention hack, right? And so the thing with relevance is not every offer has relevance that you could possibly message to. Like you don't know, like there's not always something that you can say in order to make your message relevant because you can't do the research. It's something private about the company. And so um, I, I feel like there's personalization where there's just personalization almost for personalization's sake, which I'm actually a fan of. 
because I'd way rather send an email with personalization than not, because at least you gave a little bit of, of stuff there. Now there's personalization. That's just bad and just don't do it anymore. Like just being like, Oh, I saw you went to Rutgers. Amazing. Like there's stuff like that, but like, just don't do that. There's a new thing that we're doing with all of our new customers that we call recency, that this is becoming the first line for all of our, our new customers. And so it's a type of personalization that the only way that the point of the personalization is to show, hey, you're receiving an email out of the blue, but it's only because you did something recently. That is why I'm emailing you. And so we've created a waterfall. This is my next YouTube video. I haven't filmed it yet, but my wife is going to Miami this week and we are going to hammer YouTube videos this weekend, my boys. It's crazy. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, when my wife goes away, I just literally just work. It's like other guys would, I don't even know what other guys do. I just work. And so... Um, with this recency waterfall, what we're checking for is like anything that you would find about a person that they recently did that then would catch your eye and then you would start looking into their company and that's why you started sending an email. So first, we're looking to see if um, they're new in their role because that's just a great trigger just overall and if we can catch them while they're new in their role, amazing. Then we're checking if they're promoted um, in their role. And then we want to check like promoted recently. And then we want to check if they've just ever been promoted because then that allows us to send a line of like, Hey, like you got a promotion. I'm sure the way you get promotions is having, you know, new ideas and bringing it to the team. I've got a new idea for you. That's kind of like the angle of that one. And then we're checking if uh, they have posted recently on LinkedIn. We're checking if the company has posted recently on LinkedIn. We're checking if the, the company has been shouted out in a podcast recently, we use Clagent for that because there's no like, I'm literally just being like, has this company been mentioned on a podcast? And usually what we'll get is like the CEO is going to be mentioned uh, on the podcast. And then there's a couple other things that we're checking for. Um, recent news about the company that we get from predict leads. And then there's one more recency that we're checking for. Oh, a new leader being hired at the company or a new individual contributor being hired at the company. So if, if they're in the head level, like we'll say like, oh, you know, the chief, new chief marketing officer, or if they're like at the head level of marketing and then they hired a new graphic designer, like we're checking for those things too. All of these things so that we can have a recent thing to be like, hey, like this thing happened and I'm like, I'm just the guy reaching out now because we found this recent thing that happened. And I, I guess this is a perfect time to plug that like I'll be making a full YouTube video on this. So go follow it. Uh, Eric Noslowski, and you'll see the the whole thing of what I'm talking about. And so these are kind of like the new, when our clients don't have anything better to say as a first line for the personalization, we're using the recency waterfall, which is just a bunch of clay integrations with AI scripts that it stops running as soon as it finds the thing. And it's also ordered in cost. So like that way we can just keep going with like super cheap things that's either free because if it didn't find it then it's not going to charge us anything or it's just ratcheting up in cost and we'll just end with the most expensive thing and uh we'll be using that for our first line so again i think that was a four minute way to explain something really simple but uh a personalized opening line for cold leads would be some of those unless you have something more relevant to say to them love it uh next question by dino um What's your process when starting a prospecting strategy? Do you test out massively uh, value positions, targets, pain points? Um, I guess, Patrick, if you want, you can also answer this one. So this this is yeah. the newest thing. Oh, wait, was this for me or for Patrick? I mean, for whoever wants to add value, oh, really. Go ahead, Eric. Yeah, I'll go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, the, this is the newest thing that we're going to do with all of our customers. And this is YouTube video number two <laughs> that I need to be working on. Is So we've actually found working with our customers that... It, most of the time, a crazy list has not really increased response rates. Like it, like the amount of times that you really change your list and your list increased the amount of response rates isn't that high. It's really when you find that thing that people are super interested in, like when they receive a cold email and it's like, are you interested in unlimited inboxes with instantly or are you interested in their lead finder, right? Most people are more interested in the unlimited inboxes than they are with the unlimited lead finder because they, they kind of have that and it's like leads, who knows, like blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Apollo is charging them $50 a month for inboxes. Don't quote me on that. I made that up. I have no clue. And so we know that it's more interesting to message about unlimited inboxes and unlimited sending than it is to message the, the other way. And so uh, what we're starting to do with all of our customers is we just have like templated campaigns that we're just going to launch first. And we're just going to swap out value propositions. 
so that we could test the value propositions and the pain points and all those things much faster than setting up a campaign. Like there was one company that I set up, it took me four hours to build their clay table. Like no lie, like four hours to build their clay table oh. and we still got no responses. And it's because we didn't do like a value proposition testing that then when we went back with the better value proposition with that better data, it works so much better. So we're going to be doing this value proposition testing um, earlier. Yeah. And in short, I mean, as Eric was kind of alluding to, like all we were working on is testing as many iterations of this as possible to get something that scales relatively well. Um, and that includes offers too. Like what offers are going to be the most enticing for somebody to respond to? Um, like what can we realistically give away or what value can we bring to a prospect that will allow them to respond to, to the campaign? So. At the end of the day, like I, I feel like most cold email in short is just testing a lot of value props. And I, I think I think also targeting is still is massively underrated. Like um, even when I'm doing clay imports, sometimes I'll do a clay import and I won't get any positive responses. I'll do Apollo, like relatively similar targeting, but like one or two tweaks, maybe I'll add like one filter and it'll do significantly better. So I would I, I would I don't, honestly like I mean, it's pretty obvious, but in short, just test a ridiculous amount. Um, and ideally, um, if you do that at a, a large enough scale, with enough leads for it to be statistically significant, you will probably get something or at least enough data to determine whether cold email is enough, a good enough channel or a viable channel to use for your product. I think it's always just answering like, how do you send something that when somebody reads it, they're like, oh, this is what I'm gonna get in return, you know? Yes. Um, and so is a part of resp response a meeting booked? No. No, 100% no, no. no. But that's I, my I, whole goes from your best idea to a positive response. So that's why I always talk in positive responses. Yeah, um, actually, I, I, yeah, I want to highlight this question because I, I want to ask you guys, like, how do you guys um, increase the, the meeting book kind of rate? Because, um, you know, I feel like this is an issue for, for like some people, like they will get a reply and then like, what are the next steps, right? Like, how do they, how do they increase those? Like, basically, how do we make more revenue um, after getting replies? So yeah, how do you currently manage that? I'm going to just reiterate what Alex Mosey said because like there's nothing better that we could possibly say. So when we had the opportunity with the Instantly team to have an interview with Alex Mosey, it, the interview almost got a little trite at one point because he almost like for everything that we asked, like even his team, we sent them the questions and they were like, this is way too many questions. You got to shorten this up. And uh, everything that we asked, he was like, you just need a better lead magnet. You just need a better, like literally every, everything that we asked, he was like, you just need a better lead magnet. So we've even found too, like if we were to run an outbound campaign and we were going to say, you know, Hey, would you want to learn about how we could run outbound campaigns for you? You're, you're not going to like, you're going to have drop off from people who, you know, are going to, they're going to say they're interested and then they're just not going to book or they're not going to show up to the meeting, whatever it might be. But when we shifted to like, Hey, we'll score 5,000 accounts for you for absolutely free. You just need to hop on a call so that we know that we're doing it correctly and we'll do it live in front of you. Like nobody, like if, if we say, if they positively respond to that, I would say almost nobody is not moving on to the next step and, and booking with us. And so I hate to be so trite, but I'm just going to respond with what Alex Mosey said, because there's nothing really better that we can say. So it's just, if, if you're having a problem booking meetings, there's simple stuff that you need to be doing, like responding right away, giving them lots of options, like following up with them and like all of those basic things that you already know you need to be doing. But then the big thing is like, how can you increase the carrot that like, if you attend this call, you're, this amazing thing is going to happen. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Yeah. And and actually that that's the reason why we built this whole like AI inbox manager thing. And we also launched an app because, you know, we felt like the the response time is such a critical component that we, I mean, I, actually a lot of people don't know this, but we have a phone app. So literally people while, while they're waiting, I don't know, at the theater or for the bus, um they can just from their phone like reply back um and yeah it, 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 it there's some components that make it definitely faster but yeah the um, um what you just said like makes total sense like I, I agree with with hormosis so i think we can end it with just this comment it's a legend and uh just like really appreciate oh. all the value that uh you know you patrick and eric you know have been sharing here like i'm just listening i'm just learning uh you're sharing like a little bit of data here but but yeah, like really appreciate you guys taking the time to join us. I'm sure like our entire Facebook community like has benefited a lot from this. Uh, yeah, it, it, all I can say was a pleasure to uh, to be on a live with you guys. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Um, we also, we love Instantly, amazing tool. Uh, it makes it really easy to to do webinars like this because there's just no like, it just works so 
like the integration is unbelievable. And um, I, I, I mean, just to like reiterate what I said before, to be able to essentially have like an ads network at your fingertips for like $200 all in is insane. And tools like instantly allow that to happen. Like it's so, so, so much value for what you're paying. I mean, it's, it's like so marginal, especially once you start getting, you start getting results. You, know, like you won't even think about it because it's just, it's so unbelievable. So thanks for being on, you know, it was, it was, it was great to talk about it. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So cool. once again, guys, it's uh, great to see you again. And like, yeah, we hope we can have another live. Maybe we can have a part two and go, maybe we'll go more in depth. Uh, let's see if I can get approval from this one guy that was getting 50% of lie rate, like share the secret sauce. Maybe we can go through like his crazy clay tables. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, we should do but it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. All right, guys. Uh, it was yeah. great to see you. Appreciate it. Bye, everyone. Yes.